In our first reading this morning, David, King David, I should say, decides to number all the people in his country, both in the, in the north of Israel and in the south called Judah. So when he numbers all the people, he is sinning. David is worried that his kingdom would not have, would not be able to sustain an attack from their enemy. So he wants to know how many men there are who could serve as soldiers in his army. In doing this, he fails to trust that God would take care of the people. When David is then given the opportunity to choose his own punishment from God, he seems to put the people at risk by choosing three days of pestilence. And for those that may not know what pestilence is, it's a deadly disease. So for three days, send a deadly disease among the people, rather than choosing three months of being pursued by his enemies, putting his own life at risk. 70,000 people die from this disease that's sent. At the end of our first reading, David realizes what he's done. He admits that he has had his values and his priorities mixed up. He repents again and asks for forgiveness. If we look to our gospel now, the people around Nazareth, which was the hometown of where Jesus grew up, questioned Jesus as to his knowledge and his abilities and his authority. Because of their lack of faith, look to the first reading, David's lack of faith, the people in Nazareth, their lack of faith, Jesus was not able to preach or perform many miracles there. If we compare David and the people from Jesus' hometown of Nazareth to the complete faith of Christians who give their lives as martyrs, we see a striking difference between a lack of faith and complete faith in Jesus. David places his faith in human armies. Jesus' neighbors cannot put their faith in Jesus. They only see their former neighbor and not the Messiah. Christian martyrs throughout the world give the ultimate witness to their faith by willing to die for their faith. What does our faith mean to all of us here? It is so easy for us to trust in earthly values. Money, fame, power. We think that because we have this or that, that we are successful. If our priorities are only in earthly things, we are failing to trust in God. We may think that knowing certain people or dropping their names in conversations will gain us status. There are those occasions when we fail to see God's presence in the people of real faith around us. We tend to think that some people are hypocrites because we know some of their past experiences. They might have sinned in the past. We all have. Could we stand up for our faith as the martyrs did as mo or as modern-day holy people do today? It is easy to profess our beliefs when we are surrounded by other believers. Those are our friends. It is more difficult when others challenge us why we believe the way that we believe. It is then we need to assertively stand up for what we believe. Be assertive means that we are respectful of other people and of other persons while we share our faith with them. It is when our faith is tested that we can see which values we should cling to. Does God test our faith? Yes, he does. 
God will allow us to be tested, but God does not inflict harm upon us. I suggest you do this. Look to our psalm for today and pray with it. For this shall every faithful person pray to you in time of stress. You are my shelter. From distress, you will preserve me. With glad cr cries of freedom, you will ring me round. Amen.